Diagnostics on demand. After two years of pandemic, the advantages of speedy, on-demand, personalized testing have never been clearer. Canadian medical company Switch Health embraces a digital-first world with what it calls a patient-first experience. I'm Andrew Wilson, and I'm here in Davos to talk to co-CEOs Mark Thompson and Dillian Stoyanov about the future of bespoke diagnostics. Mark, Dylan, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. First of all, give us the big picture. Tell us a bit about Switch Health. So Switch Health started in 2017 as a health tech consultancy. Uh, one of our first major activations that really drove the ethos of our business was uh, working with people afflicted with diabetes. Um, one thing we found out in that activation was that people afflicted with diabetes have a particular uh, burdensome task put on them that is collecting their own patient data, storing the data, communicating the data to a healthcare practitioner, receiving information back from the healthcare practitioner, and then actioning those insights. So from the work we did, we really had this, this idea in our head, which is if we would trust someone with a serious ailment like diabetes to perform that level of granular collection accurately, why would we not put that same model of care onto someone afflicted with a less serious ailment? So that idea of self-guided healthcare has been our foundation. and. Uh, probably about early 2020, we were uh, making some proposals to the federal government of Canada in order to assist with COVID-19 testing across the country. That really accelerated our model of self-guided healthcare with the utilization of our at-home specimen collection kits for COVID-19, collected at home, sent back to a lab for processing, communicated through software. Um, we did about 4.5 million tests in total, 2 million of those being done at home. Uh, and now we're at a point of growth where we're seeing that same foundation, that same ethos from our inception being driven into all other modalities of specimen collection. If you can collect it at a lab, we aim to be able to collect it from your home. So post pandemic now, you've got a fresh blueprint to work with. Yeah, absolutely. And the, sort of the, the accelerant that was the pandemic in terms of pu pushing forward our goals of decentralized diagnostics, to Mark's point, uh, performing millions of tests successfully from home is, is not a small feat. Um, and, and one thing that's also important is that, you know, these are tests that are not only uh, performed at home, they're performed under medical supervision through our platform. So that level of um, integrity of the specimen is what was missing in traditional telehealth of, you know, if, if I get a piece of diagnostics back, I'm, I'm a physician, I'm going to question the self-collection. Having that been medically supervised during collection is a total game changer in terms of what you're able to do. And moving forward, not only in increasing the types of tests you're doing from home, but taking burden off of the somewhat fatigued post-pandemic healthcare system. So first of all, they're going to the medical establishment who hitherto would have been doing this kind of work. Have they welcomed this? Uh, yeah, in many ways, absolutely. Because you have sort of the diagnostic side of healthcare and then you have the sort of emergency medicine and first person stuff. So on the diagnostic side, it, you know, totally clobbered during the pandemic um, and you know, sort of putting forward technologies that we ourselves, as well as with partners, enable them to be able to actually, you know, take the burden off of the healthcare human resources, which has been obviously drained over the last couple of years, and offer new and novel sort of solutions for their patients has been extremely welcomed by them. And Mark, and we should probably worth definitely worth mentioning that a large proportion of our team are a part of that what you'd consider to be traditional medical landscape. Mm -hmm. We're not there to replace that landscape. We're there to enable that landscape. Same with, um, you know, governments. Um, there are government payer systems that are in place. We're not here to replace those. We're here to help enhance the service. So one of the biggest benefits of our platform of decentralized diagnostics is the ability to enhance access to things like rural and remote locations or um, getting ease of access for uh, a, a very invasive tests where there might be a less invasive, more easily accessible uh, alternative. And the example I like to draw on is our HPV test. So, HPV uh, in parts of North America is a fairly large problem in that undiagnosed, it can lead to cervical cancer, um, among the other elements. The pap test. Yeah. Right. So uh, what we've done is in place of having a pap smear, which you need to book a session with a physician, have the collection, send it to the lab, get the results within maybe a two to three week period, we're able to do all that from home with a self-collected swab. And this is just one small my myopic idea that is very real and very tangible that we're doing but what's interesting, you're taking healthcare out of the healthcare environment and putting it into a kind of a different sector almost, 
but bringing MDs and other expertise with you so it still functions in the way it would have done if it was still in the healthcare sector. Is that fair? Yeah, no, entirely. And I think that giving people uh, a level of um, autonomy into both their own healthcare and in their circle of care, uh, diagnostics equals data. And data equals, you know, if you can get better data in earlier, you're going to have better healthcare outcomes, right? So it in many ways also takes the pressure off the traditional system. We work in collaboration. We're not looking to replace anything. And there's been a massive um, level of appreciation from, you know, some of the providers that we work with as well. Because, again, uh, post-pandemic, I think globally healthcare has been strained and allowing physicians to focus on, um, you know, sort of important things, get that data earlier on and have the patients actually access that. Because what we're noticing in North America is huge backlogs. Your basic blood work, you're waiting for six weeks to get an appointment, right? That's something could happen in that period of time. So giving people that option, but having it fully integrated into the healthcare system and doing it in partnership has been, you know. So sort of a growth question then, you know, during the pandemic, heavy workload, right at the coalface, clear demand, accelerated growth to meet that demand. Now you've probably learned quite a bit about what your operation is capable of. What are your plans for taking that energy and taking what you've learned and moving it uh, sideways or out of Canada, say? So there are really two different lanes that we play in right now. And we can sort of break that down very colloquially into medically necessary and preventative. So medically necessary is uh, you know, symptom engagement test. So I have a pain in my abdomen, could it be a UTI, I'll do a urine test. And a physician has communication with your nurse practitioner or other healthcare practitioner within your jurisdiction that has the credentials to guide you through that experience will be there. So that is a big part of our business. That is a significant part of our business. That is uh, engaging with governments, uh, engaging with government data repositories to make sure that anything that needs to be reported is reported and people can, instead of paying out of pocket, can tap into those government uh, pay systems. The other side of things is preventative care. Now this is something that's not gonna be covered uh, by a government system, but people want to. People want to be able to keep tabs on their healthcare and we're seeing that more and more and more post pandemic that people are taking these concepts of telehealth and decentralized testing and we're not the only ones doing it we're just the ones doing it in canada with government partners but uh you know blood testing is an example with a very small drop of blood uh on a dry blood spot which is currently used in neonatal testing for uh, um, new infants um, we can take that same technology and give someone a fairly robust blood panel to let them know a snapshot of their general health now, if anything within that test is a bit askew or it doesn't look uh, to be fantastic, we can then escalate that to a medically necessary test, whether that be decentralized or in clinic. So we're creating these different ecosystems where people, to Dylan's point, collect self-data uh, and then action self-data. In the way established medical systems in different countries around the world with different governments and so on have been operating thus far for the last 20, 30 years, do you feel that what you're doing is revolutionary? Do you feel that what you're doing is taking something and steering it forward that could develop into a new normal? Yes, I, fundamentally, I believe that elements of what we're doing are novel, but we're sort of creating a foundation for the next wave of healthcare. I mean, I'm kooky enough to see a future where we're gonna have some non-invasive surgeries performed, maybe not in a hospital. Maybe there's elements of that that can be done with robotics. Maybe there's uh, a future where there's more invasive self-guided healthcare that we can do. Uh, with just a much more advanced technology, but we're creating a platform and a foundation to get people, consumers, companies, uh, healthcare facilities used to that style of healthcare. So final thought then, I would see that as a technical, technology-driven response to an age-old cultural medical approach, which can only be in the long term refreshing and changing. Absolutely. So small and banal example, but a lot of the partners we've worked with in, you know, we like Dylan said, bridges, not modes. We work with competitors. We work with competitor labs, competitor tech companies, but all for the benefit of the patient. Some partners we work with, uh, and this is a fairly widely spread utilization, is fax to send information from point A to point B. So lab to physician, lab to hospital, hospital to lab, fax. So when you're trying to do something like what's called a sessioning, which is taking patient information from the test, putting it into a repository, sending it out, some of it's done by hand, some of it's typed out, some of it's again faxed from point A to point B, then written down with by hand. So human error, uh, time, human resources. Again, not, what we're doing is not novel. We just said, how about we just send that all digitally? How about we just do one digital send? Everyone gets access to it compliantly. And that's not novel, that it's just, there's technical debt, there's processes. When you have a clean slate, which we did, we were able to just 
build from the ground up with what we thought would be the most uh, accurate and fastest activation. Dylan, Mark, thanks very much indeed. Good to talk to you. Thank you. And to you. Thank you for having us.